Bible says his heart was hardened again. He forgot of all the plagues. He forgot that his son died. He forgot all the situation that helped. He forgot that it was God's hand that moved upon him. And people are like that today. People could go through bad situation after bad situation after bad situation. Remember when the, when the, when the Twin Towers was hit? All the, all the people that can't even get along in Congress are on the, on the steps saying, oh, we locked up together. Because they don't know who was going to get hit next. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oregon complaining, can't pass a bill, can't do nothing. And they're all locked up, Republicans and Democrats. Everybody, oh, we're together. We locked up together. But as soon as the situation passed, mm -hmm. they went right back to bickering and fighting again. And that's how the world is. As soon as a bad situation happens, we why do people do what they do? Because once that bad situation goes, they're hardened to things. Yeah. They forget about the tough time they was in. They forget about the bad situation. We wonder, how is it word that a prisoner would go in and get locked up, come back and do something else crazy, and get go right back to jail? Yeah. Why is a person that's a dope addict get delivered, get set free, and then go right back to that situation? If you don't got something to keep that situation out of you, yeah. you'll go right back to a worse situation. <laughs> we wonder well, how can they do what they do when they don't have God they can't help themselves but to do what they do and we should get upset when we see people going through things and doing what they're doing we're doing what they're doing God said I give you wisdom and knowledge so you know how to deal with people and that's why I say fret not thyself because of evil doing they're in a cycle you can't change it and I can't change it I let people do what they want to do. If they want to be in that revolving chain, that's what they're going to do. Be in that revolving chain, in and out, in and out. How come my husband don't love me? How come my wife don't love me? How come my children do what they do? If they don't have God, if they don't have a relationship, if they're not walking and talking with God, they'll do, Bible said that men will do anything under the sun. So the Bible said that word got back to Pharaoh that the church of Israel was encamped by the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that Pharaoh and his people began to say, why did we let the children of Israel go? Mm -hmm. We let a million people go. Mm -hmm. They was doing our crops. They was building our pyramids. They was building our kingdom. They did all of our labor and it was free labor. How come we let them go? Mm -hmm. This thing began to set down inside of them. Wait a minute, wait a minute. That was free labor. A million people of free labor. Now we got to do our own crops. Now we got to do our own work. We got to build our own building. Now we got to build our own pyramid. Wait a minute, that doesn't sound naturally right. Mm -hmm. And the Bible said their hearts was hardened. <laughs> and Pharaoh got terribly upset. Matter of fact, he probably was getting really mad because he thinking, dear God, kill my son. Mm -hmm. Well, the world is you kill something of mine, I'm going to kill something of yours. You do evil to me, I'm going to do evil to you. Now the hearts was hardened against the children of Israel. Now they began to get upset in the, with the children. Now that they were getting to get furious. If somebody came and shot you, shot up your house, you want to shoot up their house. You ain't got no God in you. Somebody did something to you, you want to do something to them. That's the mentality of the world. And the Bible said Pharaoh made his chariots ready. And he got all his people together. And the Bible said he got 600 of his choice chariots. He got the best that he had together. He got all of his armor together because he said, I'm going to go deal with these children of Israel. I let them go pray, but they, they didn't come in back. So I'm going to go deal with them. And the Bible said, the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart. And he pursued after the children of Israel. And the children of Israel had gone out with a high head. They went out doing pretty good. They went out rich. They went out encouraged. There was no more slave. They was free. They went out with a high hand, but now here comes Pharaoh. Pharaoh's army was the most powerful army in the world at that time. There was none greater than them. So what kind of challenge do they have going after a million slaves that don't know nothing about fighting? That was an easy, that was a slaughter. That's like going out there, some cows and some sheep out there, and you just start killing them. Because they don't know how to fight. They don't know what to do. And that's how the church of the future was. And that's how we feel many times. We feel like lambs before the slaughter. We feel like people slaughtering us, situations slaughtering us. We feel like stuff is coming against us. I can't fight this. I don't know what to do with this. Thing. But God says, if I be for you, who can be against you? So here come the children of Israel sitting there waiting at the seat. Some wondering why they're there. But the Bible said, here come Pharaoh. And the Bible says when the Egyptians pursued after them with their chariots and their army, the Bible said as they drew near 
prayer to the children of Israel. Now you can imagine a whole army coming and you sitting by the sea. And you can, if it's a whole army, as they get closer and closer, the noise is getting louder and louder and louder. They say, wait a minute, what is this noise coming? We hear horses and we hear chariots. What's going on? And the Bible says, somebody must have got a wind and go and look. And they saw the army of Pharaoh coming. Can you imagine how the church in Israel was doing then? Can you imagine how they felt? Yeah. Trapped against the Red Sea. Nowhere to run. And here come a whole army after you. Chariots and horses. And you on your feet. Chariots and horses. Warriors with the spear. And you on your feet. Trapped and you can't go nowhere. As they said, trapped like a rat. And the Bible said, the children of Israel began to be so afraid. When you get in trouble, what do we really do? When we get in sincere trouble, oh God, help me. We begin, oh God, I need some help here, Lord. Oh God, if you just get me out of this situation. I don't know how I'm going to do this. Oh God, if you give me, help me, I'll do this. I mean, we begin a lot of all kind of stuff. Stuff we know we should be doing. I'll do this or just if the word. Lord, I'll pray more. I'll study more. Lord, I'll love. Lord, if you get, I'll do right. God. Just get me out of this situation. And some things are real hot. And the Bible says, as they cry to the Lord, it, you know, you, what happens when people get in trouble? They, they, they begin to look for somebody that they can, they can blame. They, you know, we always want to put something on somebody else. We always want to find us an escape goal. And the Bible said they cried unto Moses because there was not enough graves and evil. He said, we could have died in evil. There's enough graves and evil. Why you bring us out here to die? Why you bring? We told you when we was in when we was in Egypt, leave us alone. It's best. To, it was better to be a slave. Now can you imagine that? It was better to be locked up. It was better to be a slave. It was better to not have no control of my life. It was better to be a a hard taskmaster. It was better to be beaten down. It was better to be doing all these kind of ways. Who wants to be entrapped? Who wants to be beaten? Who wants to be stepped on? Who wants to be knocked down? Who wants to have no rights? But that's what they were saying. It was better if we were slaves than be free out here. And the Bible said, <laughs> didn't we tell you to leave us alone when we was in Egypt? Didn't we tell you it would have been better to serve them and, than to die in this wilderness? And many times, just because things go bad, we begin to say, I'd rather be back in my trap than being out here. Things are too hard for me here. We forget about what God delivered us out of. We forget about how we was crying. And, oh, God, deliver me. God, oh, God, set me free. Didn't God set us free? And the first time a problem comes, we say, oh, I wish I was back in the situation that I was in. We need to wake up and, 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 and say, God, keep my eyes open. I don't want to go back. I know what God delivered me out of. I know the trap I used to be in. I have no desire to go back. Things may be rough right now, but I know what it used to be like. I thank God today. I got some peace. I got some joy. I may not be doing all that I want, going everywhere I want, but I like where I'm at than where I used to be. And the devil would entrap us and make us want to go back. Make us want to start complaining and murmuring. That's the first thing that comes up when a problem comes up. We don't complain and murmur. When a problem or situation comes, we go before God. God, you got me here. You said acknowledge you. I'm acknowledging you. I need some help right now, God. Yeah. <laughs> and the Bible says, Moses turned to the people and said, fear ye not. See, you got to have some spiritual backbone. That when everybody turned against you, when everybody start complaining against you, and everybody start shooting you down, when everybody start saying your situation, it's your decision that got me in this situation. You got to have some backbone from God that said, look at here, fear ye not. If God got us here, then God can show sure us get us out. If God is on my side, then you got to understand that God has already made a way. And the Bible said, he said, fear not. He said, stand still. When a situation comes, don't get all messed up. Stand still. If you don't know what to do, stand still. And wait on God. We listen to the song. I don't mind waiting. If I got to wait before I begin to make a decision to put me in a worse situation than I'm in right now. So he said, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. What you shall show you today. For the Egyptian that you're looking at that's coming across the hill, he said, that enemy, he said, look at here, you won't see them ever again.
in after this day. Now that's a powerful statement. And they were ready to kill Moses. Moses said, I see the army coming. So what? I see the river in front of me. So what? But the day, because I was in the backside of the desert, I saw a burning bush being consumed. And it didn't, it didn't burn up. I saw the fire over it. And out of the midst of the fire, I heard a voice call my name. I know that I know that my God is with me. And my God told me to tell you, stand still. Yes, I see the army coming. Yes, I know that they're bigger than us. But today, you won't see them no more. That's a powerful statement. That's a powerful statement. You've got to have a relationship with God to make such a statement like that. And the Bible said, you don't have to fight no more. He said, he told the church, he said, yo, hold your peace. Stop your complaining. You I ain't worried about you trying to fight against them because you don't know how to fight. But hold your peace. I said, well, what do you mean hold your peace? Stop your complaining. Stop your murmuring. Stop doing the believe that God can't get us out of this situation. The God that you don't know, you're going to begin to know him after this day. Bless your name, God. And that's what God was doing. God was building the faith. See, sometimes to build our faith, God has allowed us to go through some, not just situations, some impossible situations. I don't see my way out of this. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I guess I, I looked everywhere I know. I prayed. I cried. I've done everything I know to do. But God, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of you. I'm your child. I'm your son. I'm your daughter. You said trust you with all my heart, with all my soul. So sometimes God have allow us to go through some impossible situations that we really don't want to go through. Jesus, and he didn't want to get on the cross, but he had a nevertheless spirit. And we got to do the same thing. Lord, I just don't want to deal with it. But nevertheless, I know what I was sent here for. I know what I was called for. And the Bible says, and the Bible said that he said to the Lord, he said to Moses, he said, Moses, why are you crying to me? <laughs> Bless your name, Jesus. Moses, I, I, I spoke real good to you when you was on the backside of the desert. M Moses, when I brought you to Egypt, don't you remember when you prayed and you called on me? Did not I send the locusts? Did not I send the frogs? Did not I send the hell and brimstone? Did not I send the death angel? Moses, why are you crying to me? You ought to know who I am. You ought to know the fullness of me. Don't just talk and have a good talk telling the people to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Why are you crying to me? I'm a God trying to say to us. It's easy to say it in here. But God said, I want y'all to understand that I am God. I am God. Y'all understand? Y'all understand? Young man, young man, when you walk out like that, I'm preaching, put your hand up or something, okay? All right. Bless the Lord. We, we got to get this thing, y'all. We, we got we to get this thing. And the Bible said, he said, Moses, the people got to go forward. They standing still. Why y'all standing still? He said, let me give you some more instruction what you need to do. He said, stretch out your rod over the sea. Lay your hands out and divide the water so that the children of Israel can walk over on dry land. What are you talking about? He said, I'm giving you divine instruction. See, sometimes God got to build our faith. So that when he speaks something that seems crazy, we'll say, wait a minute, if God say do this, then I'm going to do it. Who am I to say, God say, stretch out your hand, world, and the waters will part, and you can walk over on dry land. I'm saying, God, what are you talking about? I ain't got that kind of power. Who am I to tell the water to spit? But when you've got a relationship, when you've been talking with God, when God been speaking to you, when God been performing miracles, then God say, when I speak, move. Because head knowledge will get in the way. When 